Yo, what is good, dev guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're just gonna jump right into the code. Y'all know me, man. This ain't no beginner shit around here, baby. We we doing it big, baby. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is one. Let's create a directory for modular character. Let's call it modular character or something like that. Or I, I think I call it something like that. Modular character. And we're gonna need a couple things inside of here. Uh, so let's make another directory. Sorry if you're using. Uh, Visual Studio, that's on you, brother. That's on you, brother. Nah, I'm playing. Uh, so I'm going to make an actor folder here. Let's make a data types folder because we're going to need some structs and we're going to need some enums. So let's make one for data types. And then let's also make a directory for mm, this needs to be our data period, like our data assets. So I'll call it data assets. And uh, starting with the actor, since that's going to be simple to make, we'll make this Unreal class here, we'll derive it from actor. And let's go ahead and call it. And I, I realistically, this needs to be derived from the Lyra tagged actor. And I'm going to call this a modular character skin. And let's go ahead and plug that into the actor folder. Uh, hit OK. If you don't have Rider, one, you're going to have to go into the editor and create these classes and directory yourself. I ain't going to lie to y'all that I'm not going to show you how to do that, bro. Uh, like, I'm not going to try to cater to people who aren't listening to me. Get Rider. All right. <laughs> so um, first thing we want to do is uh, open up this dot uh, h file if it doesn't already open for you here and we need a few components so i'm gonna make a protected section and hashtag region okay my live template still doesn't work oh my god so uh, let's do a pragma uh, region and i'll do another pragma in the region i'm not sure why this uh, live template is not working but i'm gonna try not to get frustrated we need a u property and this needs to be edit. Uh, we will make it visible anywhere. Blueprint read only. Uh, if you work in blue, let's just make a blueprint read, right? Because some people might work in blueprint uh, category. Uh, let's call this character skin or character part. And then I want to make a T object pointer PTR. This is the new Unreal standard. They're using T object pointer instead of a raw, just a pointer. So I'll just do a T object pointer of class U skeletal mesh components. And we're going to call this our head. So for a modular character, we're going to have a head, a torso. We're going to have legs and hands. So the only reason I'm doing it this way instead of the way that I do it in my own project, which is head, arms, chest, and legs is because the package that we're working with has the head as one mesh, the chest and arms as one mesh, the hands as one mesh, and the legs as one mesh. So I want to take advantage of those assets. So I'm going to organize it like that. So uh, I'll, I'll keep the same name and structure so that if you want to just plug in arms, you can plug in arms. But in this project, our torso is going to be our chest and arms our arms is going to be our hands and our legs will be our legs. So let's go ahead and just type these out and you can name it whatever you want. Uh, just, you know what I'm saying? Do what you feel, but try to try to follow. So we have these four components. We need a function here. This, this function needs to be public. Uh, this function basically needs to load our assets for us. So uh, you can make it virtual, but I just made it void. And we want to say void load uh, custom or load selected parts. And this will actually take in a parameter, uh, but we don't actually have that parameter now yet. We will uh, create that in our data types class. Uh, I just want to set up the, the the baseline for a lot of things right now. The good thing about program is that you can always uh, come back and add and subtract things. I'm going to comment this out so that we have this right here. Uh, I'm also going to make a U function. And this is just because this function is going to be calling uh, asynchronous 
a function that is going to uh, respond via a delegate. This needs to be a U function. We can actually take this and put it in a private, uh, private section because it doesn't need to be accessible anywhere but inside of this class because it's just going to be a delegate function. So make this private and this is going to be a void on parts loaded. And I need one more. We're going to comment these out because we're not going to use them yet. But I'm just writing them right now so that would it and when we come back it all makes sense. Void on meshes meshes loaded. Okay. So let's select all these, control alt and question mark, and that'll comment them out for us. So let's go to the constructor and actually do something that we can, you know what I'm saying, that actually makes sense here. So the first thing we want to do is construct our head as the root component. So I'll say root component equals a uh, head, which equals create sub object. Uh, you can see that I get this auto completion. Uh, that's not rider. That is actually GitHub Copilot. I do suggest investing the $10 a month into that. It's not that bad, man. For $23 a month for that gives you rider and GitHub Copilot. Me personally, I pay for Rider for the year. Is I think it's one hundred and nineteen dollars, so you get a little discount. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely look into that, man, and tell them I sent you. Uh, so we'll set the heads collision to no collision, and then we'll move on to the torso, and we'll go ahead and create that guy, and we'll set up the attachment to the head, and we also want to set this torso's lead pose component or and we can actually call the function set lead pose component to the head and this will actually set it up to follow whatever the head is doing and we're going to do this pretty much for the rest of the parts so um, let's take this torso here and I'm actually just going to create a cursor wherever there's the letter wherever there's torso and we're going to call this the arms and same thing here create a cursor wherever torso is if you don't know how to create a cursor it's control alt shift and click and it'll place an extra cursor for you okay so this will be arms legs and that'll set up our mesh it'll kind of be used the same way as Lyra is using its uh, actor that it has for the character part but instead we'll have this modular character that we'll pass in okay so moving on to the data types because we need to have our data types before we create our data asset I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a unreal class we're just going to make it an empty class uh, this is going to be modular character types that's what we're going to call it did i spell that right i did and we're going to hit ok and create that from an empty class the first thing i want to do is go to this dot cpp file and uh delete all of this here because that's going to not compile later delete this class and then we want to actually hashtag include the modular character types dot generated dot h or you're going to get a, a weird error that doesn't make any sense uh, but it's just because we didn't create uh, include the generated files here. All right, so we need an enum. This is basically going to be an enum class. This is going to be the e body part slot, and it's going to extend you into eight. We'll go ahead and make this a blueprint type as well, since we do want to have access to this in Blueprint. We're basically going to give this the same names as the other types, torso, arms, and legs. And then we need another, not another UE num, we need a uh, U struct here. And this is going to be F body or character body part. And this is our main body part struct here and we're going to create some structs to help with this structure so hit enter on that and that'll go ahead and s store that for us another thing i'm noticing i actually don't need core minimal in here uh, we'll include whatever we want to include if we need to include something but we don't need core minimal for that so this f character body part it also needs to be a blueprint type because we do need to edit it in blueprint we need a u property 
and we want this to be edited anywhere uh, blueprint read write category of body part and we we want this to be the part slot and default it to the head else when you package your project it's not going to package because it's going to have an error that this was not it um, created correctly basically mean that it wasn't uh, initialized correctly and in you structure you need to initialize uh, we need another U property here and I know you guys know I like using soft references so I'm gonna make a T soft object pointer and this is going to point to a U skeletal mesh and I know you're thinking why is skeletal mesh and not skeletal mesh component because we only need the mesh the mesh comes with the it comes with the materials already and it, it we don't need the component we just need to put the mesh into the component we already have the component in the actor so we're going to call this the body part mesh uh, we also want to make another u property and this is going to be a t soft class pointer this is going to point to a soft reference of a class and we want to use the u anim instance class because we want to have the ability to pass in specific animation blueprints depending on which part uh th this is so what, what is that why are you oh i didn't call it anything this is the hip body part anim bp and this is our struct for the actual character's body part now we do need another struct this one is going to kind of tie into the whole Lyra thing uh, because Lyra has this uh, U struct that's a F Lyra character part. We need to make a part slot. So what we could do instead of typing it all out, we can just copy this struct and then we're going to make this F character body part slot struct. And I know that the naming convention is kind of weird. It, uh, you can name these things whatever you want. Uh, I, I'm thinking on the fly here. I'm not trying to like make the best naming convention. You can always change it. We need a couple things in here. We need to know the slot because uh, this will be used as a comparison uh, inside of the, the the code logic that we will will use. So we'll use this slot to to kind of filter things. We also want to instead of this being a TSOF object pointer, we want to F gameplay tag. And this is going to include the gameplay tag container if you don't have Rider. So I'm going to add that include. And this is going to be the part type name tag. So you want to have a part type name tag and then you want to have another gameplay tag to allow you to filter by like specific part names. And this is this is just for filtering. It's not for anything specific. The reason I didn't want to do it with an enum is because whenever you create a map or anything like that, which we will be doing, enum kind of limits you. With a with a tag, you you really have no limits. You can put any kind of tag in as the key, and you don't run into that weird issue where if you use head as the first thing, you can't use the rest of the the enum uh, of the enum parts here which is weird in the in the map but we got that part name we also want this function here that allows us to compare and this is just what Lyra does in there inside of their um struct you see here this is my this is my actual name for it so let's copy this name and uh this is looking for the body part slot but we actually call that part slot and that is I think it for the actual data for now, if we have any more data, we will add it. But for now, I think we're good. Let's create this data asset as well. And let me see. I don't know how long this video is going, but I want to just get all the the pro like the code out of the like the setup of the code out of the way. And then we'll write like the bulk of things later on. So let's add Unreal class. Um, we're going to extend the primary data asset here and I want to call this my character part item and we'll hit OK. So this character part is fairly simple. We need to make a constructor. Um, we need to know the part name, the part mesh, and we need to override this function here. So I'm going to bring this function in here. All these things need to be in the public section so that we can access them from pretty much anywhere. Um, so we need a U property that is a blue edit anywhere, blueprint read only. We don't want this to be read write because it is a data asset. Let's put this in a category of 
character part and we need a F gameplay tag at the include and this needs to be the part name tag. Now this part name tag will tie into that part type name tag. You could call it the same thing if you want to. Uh, you can call it the part type name tag just so you know that you need to set this to whatever the type is. And I'll kind of oh, explain the overarching uh, parts of this in another video if you want more in-depth walk down or walk through of how the system actually works and how everything sticks. But for now, just follow the code. We also need a, a map here. So I'm going to copy this and we need a T map, my favorite data type. The first part is the key. We want it to be F gameplay tag. And then the second part is that struct that we made, the F got tier. I'm sorry, I'm using I'm using my name instructor. F character part. And I think it's the F character body part. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, because this has the 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 actual data that will be used whenever we spawn in. So uh, yes, I do understand that the naming convention is kind of confusion. This part slot is more for organization and comparison purposes. You can leave comments for yourself. And this body part is the actual body part. It has the mesh. It has the the anim BP. And uh, this, you know, this enum is just the slot that lets us know what kind of slot we're using. So going back to this, uh, I need to go ahead and why is this red? Oh, that's because I didn't give this a name. So this is the part parts or let's just call it part mesh. And then let's create all of the functions here. So I'll just create definitions um, and select both of them. And inside of this function, we actually want to do something that I did uh, that showed you guys in a previous video. So let me copy the code from here. Um, basically, what we want to know is if our part type name tag. I'm going to actually press control H, copy this and paste it here and say type and replace all. So if our part type name tag is valid, we want to set this asset ID to uh, and I'm missing a value right here. So let's make that as well. So that's a F primary asset type. And this is just our item type. It helps you filter out things. Uh, so basically what we want to do is if we have a name tag here, we want to set this asset ID, which is used to filter out this inside the project to this new primary asset ID, which is going to take the item type we give it and the part type name tag that get tag name, which gets an F name. So if our tag name is part type dot and this is going to be stupid let me put it in a comment if our tag name is part type dot head dot mail what this will do is give this asset the asset of our id of the item type and the asset name will be this name right here and you'll see later when we do our comparison code uh, why this is important. So, yeah, override this function and return uh, this guy if we have a valid tag name. If not, just return the regular F name of this asset, which is fine as well. All right. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's all we're going to type in this video. In the next video, I'm going to dig or, dig or deeper into the actual Lyra side of things. This is just us setting up our own classes. So if you guys are ready for that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.